Hello everybody. Today we are making creme brulee cake or upside down uh, custard cake because um, here everything should be upside down in the United States. So we start with the sugar in a pan on a medium fire and with a little bit of water stirring well so we will not burn we call this caramel um, because if we call it burnt sugar scares people burnt the idea to burn but this is what you're doing basically you are burning or caramelizing sugar in a separate bowl we are trying to separate to put the, the the eggs so if you're gonna go with four it's four eggs four spoons of sugar half a liter of milk or maybe two two and a half glasses um, if you go with six eggs six spoons of sugar uh, two and a half, almost three uh, glasses of milk, and so on. Uh, as I always said in my videos, you have to use your common sense. You have to feel how much sugar is needed. If it's too runny, uh, yeah, don't forget the pinch of salt of course and uh, if you feel that it's too runny you can add a spoon of flour to make the custard firmer a little bit uh, stronger that's what I just did I put the sugar I'm gonna put a little bit of flour and then We'll pour it after the caramel, the caramelized sugar, only after it's cold. So, this doesn't need a lot of uh, stirring and mixing. Just uh, be sure that you incorporated the sugar and milk and uh, spoon of flour in the meantime you have to keep watching the <clears throat> uh, sugar on the burner so it will not be burnt there we go this is with the milk This is the composition for the creme brulee or custard. All kind of like a, my trail latches. <clears throat> now, this is the, the caramelized sugar. You have to spin the pot so it will go like um, on the sides of the pot, on the walls, like three fingers up. So when you pour the composition in it, um, will just be there at the level that makes the custard with a beautiful uh, caramel brown um, uh, Cover. It will be covered in it when you put it upside down. So it's still hot as we have to spin it till it gets uh, solid. It will attach to the walls of the pot um, and just stay there. It will stop flowing. The best in um, for this cake is to use um, stainless steel pot 
so it will be easy to turn it upside down and take it out. Now we put the composition in it and we're going to stick it in the oven for like 30 minutes. Now we baked the creme brulee. In the meantime, I mixed four eggs, four spoons of flour, and four spoons of sugar. I separated the eggs and um, used the egg whites separately to make it like a dense foam and then incorporate the egg yolks, the sugar and the flour by putting air in, bring it from down from the bottom of the bowl to the surface. So the more air you put in it, the more fluffy your whipping. So once on top of my half baked creme brulee, we'll put it back in the oven for another half an hour at 360 degrees or 180 Celsius. Um, at the end, you have to <clears throat> try with a toothpick, see if it's baked. If it doesn't stick to the toothpick, it means it's done. So we're going to take it out and let it cool in the pot. The sugar at the base, the caramel, should kind of uh, melt there with all the cream and the uh, cake batter, so it will be easy to turn it upside down. Before trying to attempting to put it upside down, just make sure with a knife uh, to check if it's attached to the pot so it will not break. So I'm going to find the right size of a plate. Just put it upside down with a single move and try to see if it's coming out. Easy. And there you have it. Now, separately, I made a syrup because in Romania we eat the cakes not dry but with the syrup and that's a couple of spoon of sugar lemon juice and water and let it cool and step by step you'll try to um, put it around the cake so we will soak this cake the sponge cake it's like a sponge that's why it's called sponge because it absorbs the the liquid. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to make the cake, the base under the creme brulee drink uh, my special syrup. You can see it on the plate. So, preferably, uh, put it in the fridge like this over the night. Uh, you can use all kinds of uh, fruits, uh, spreads, uh, jellies, jellos, um, everything made of fruit. It works great with this cake. Uh, just put it on top before the whipping cream. And um, the result will be a very light, uh, very 
nice cake for the summer times when it's hot and you, you don't feel like eating something greasy and heavy. This is a very refreshing cake. So now we are um, beating the whipping cream, mixing it till it gets very solid and if it's not sweetened if the box doesn't say sweetened you should add a spoon or two of sugar just taste it don't um, take my words on it taste it and make it as sweet as you like it it should be in my opinion decent sweet because um, a lot of sugar is not a good idea in your diet so I'm gonna mix this well it should have the consistency of a fluffy meringue like when you beat the egg whites uh, basically you should be able to put the bowl upside down and it shouldn't fall out of it because it sprinkles everywhere um, as you see I try to uh, mix it in the sink so it will not be all over the uh, place in the kitchen and of course on my uh, hands and clothes and everything so there we go we're done as you see it's very consistent it just stays there yeah this is an old habit that I cannot get rid of it. I hope it doesn't annoy you. And now we are ready to cover the cake. We're gonna need a, a thin uh, blade knife or a very um, light spatula so it will help you straighten the whipping cream and cover the cake with it. Now I'm gonna add some strawberry jam or spread here and there just for a, a cake or how you call it the cherry on the cake my mom used to make a beautiful uh, black cherry jam that was kind of bitterish and it was the perfect combination for this cake. Unfortunately, it's hard to find it here, black cherries. But uh, the idea is that you can use whatever spread you have in your house. It doesn't matter. And after we did this, we're going to try to cover it. The best result is if you uh, let this cake sit for um, at least a night in the fridge. That's when all the taste and the flavors inside it, they um, mix together for the better taste. So we are putting the whipping cream, 
trying to find my tool to be able to do this properly. Here you go. This is the kind of a nice, very the knife, very very thin, flexible blade, so you can work with it. Uh, it's kind of bended towards the handle, so you will not touch with your fingers uh, whatever you're working with. It's a very smart knife, basically. And uh, if I remember where we bought that, I'm going to put a link in the description. I'm trying to find out where. Very good knife, even for cutting the cake. It is helping you a lot to lift the, the slice from the um, plate. Okay, so it doesn't have to be totally professional. I mean, it's a house-made cake. Uh, you don't have to be an expert in covering Make it smooth, and you can sprinkle uh, some tiny little um, ornamental candies, or a little bit of cocoa, or a little bit of chocolate. Something you can play with it. What is important about this is that it's 100% organic, natural, homemade cake that will totally please you. Uh, and your guests. As you can see, it takes some time and patience. It's a good exercise for your hands. The more you do this, the better it will look next time. Just keep working on it. Don't go on the sides all the way to the base. Because remember, we put that um, uh, lemon juice. Um, we put the, the syrup, as I call it. And if you touch that with the whipping cream, it will make it brown, ugly, wet. So just cover it up to uh, maybe half, uh, half a centimeter, a centimeter from the plate. And then if you really want to do it completely, you can continue the next day when you're going to serve it. This is a very relaxing uh, thing to do. It's ordinating the cake. And then uh, you see when we basically uh, end up sprinkling something on it, all that tiny little uh, Traces on top will be covered. Nobody will notice. Nobody's gonna know. The most important thing is the taste. And I hope you will enjoy it. Let me know in the comments if you don't understand something. Or if you have questions, um, again, I am not that kind of a person that will tell you three cups of this, two cups of that. I'm just telling you to use your common sense and feel what you're doing. My secret ingredient uh, in the kitchen is love, as I used to call it, love it. Uh, the answer is always love, so if you love what you do and you do it with your heart, uh, 
you're going to be happy with the result. Yeah, we could do better. There is always room for improvement. But the best thing is start doing it, try it, and you will be pleased with the taste. Nothing else but the taste is all that matters. See what happens when you touch uh, the syrup with the whipping cream, it turns into milk. That's not a good idea. So try to avoid the base or do it the next day. If you really want it covered all the way to the plate. So, I think it's looking pretty good. I hope yours will look better. Just send me a picture with your cake and tell me how it was, if you liked it or not. Here, I got a little bit of help. My right hand is trying to help me make it even all around. And, but well, all together it's good. It's looking good. There you have it. The creme brulee upside down cake or the custard upside down cake instead of uh, the pineapple. Of course you can put pineapple too. You can play with the pineapples and apples. You can bake apples um, on that um, caramel base and then fill it with all kinds of fruits and put uh, the custard on top. There are so many variants of this cake and you can play with it the way you like it. This time I just made it like this. Next time I'm gonna bake apples or I'm gonna add pineapple or mango slices, you name it. The sky's the limit. As long as you do everything that you do in the kitchen with love, and you enjoy playing with food. That's what cooking is about. You have to love it. So, um, for decorating purpose right now, I'm just looking for some chocolate in the kitchen. And we'll just go, we can sprinkle cocoa, but we can just uh, grate some chocolate on top. So it will cover the imperfection of the whipping cream. Okay, so obviously Somebody ate the chocolate or they hide it somewhere so I will not be able to find it. It doesn't matter if it's a, the chef's chocolate uh, for cakes or cookies or just regular. You just, you can come up with something to cover the cake. And once um, 
you did that, just uh, hurry up and put it in the fridge and let it sit for at least 10 hours to uh, benefit uh, from the maximum of taste and savor, savory cake. Okay, I chocolate is uh, nowhere to be found. Or somewhere. Yeah, I'm just keeping you here with the cake in front of you, hoping that um, it looks good enough for you to start making this tomorrow. Or maybe today, who knows? But if you do anything different, and uh, if you know a better way of making this cake, just let me know in the comments. I am happy to uh, learn your way of making creme brulee cake upside down cake okay finally we found the chocolate this is how you play with it Just a little bit of shredded chocolate that is breaking in bits of, and pieces. I had to improvise because I couldn't find my cooking, baking chocolate. So we found some tiny little chocolates. There you go. I hope you'll enjoy the cake and please subscribe and like for more cakes. Okay, if I haven't convinced you already, I'm gonna cut a slice. Come have one with me. Bon appetit. Have a wonderful week. And thanks for watching.